We look back at the genocides of previous generations, and we wonder, how did the world let that happen? The answer, of course, is that previous generations allowed genocides to happen for the same reason we allow genocides to happen. We don't want to be economically or ideologically inconvenienced. So when there's a genocide against Muslims in China, the companies and celebrities that constantly lecture us about morality are completely silent because they have business dealings with China and complaining about the genocide would lead to an economic inconvenience. Similarly, when there's a genocide against Christians in Nigeria, politicians and journalists are silent because they're still trying to convince us that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance and complaining about the genocide would lead to an ideological inconvenience. When it comes to genocide in any generation, it's always easier for most of the world to look the other way. But we're not most of the world. So let's talk about the Nigerian genocide. International Christian Concern reports. At least 896 civilians have been killed in violent attacks in Nigeria during the first three months of 2022. This, according to Open Doors, includes hundreds of Christians who were murdered because of their faith. Open Doors is a non-denominational organization supporting persecuted Christians in the world. Open Doors cited a report by SBM Intelligence, a Nigeria-based research firm, for the reported killings in the West African country. The attacks are blamed on Islamist extremist groups such as Boko Haram and Islamic State in West Africa province, ISWAP, militant Fulani herdsmen, bandits, and violent gangs. Now, what could all these groups who are slaughtering Christians in the name of Allah possibly have in common? Journalists can never seriously ask this question because it would be inconvenient for their narrative. Open Doors reported that there were increasing signs that these groups were working together and widening the impact of their violence. The organization alleged more Christians are killed for their faith in Nigeria than in the rest of the world combined. Nigeria is currently one of the scariest places to be a Christian, said Ilya Jadi, an Open Doors analyst for Sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria is Africa's most populous country with over 200 million people and is divided roughly in half between Muslims who live mostly in the north and Christians who live mostly in the south. Last year, Nigeria earned the distinction of being the country with the world's worst persecution in International Christian Concerns Persecutor of the Year Awards. Wow, Persecutor of the Year. The sad part is that groups like Boko Haram and Iswap would be as proud of that honor as Ali Dawa is when he talks about executing apostates. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a capital punishment. Because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt, and we're proud of that. Christian communities in the middle belt of Nigeria have effectively suffered a 20-year-long genocide, said International Christian Concern President Jeff King. Where is any action? The Nigerian government gives these attacks lip service without any meaningful response. Where is the outcry? Where is effective action? In Nigeria, the military, the police, and the intelligence agencies are all controlled by Muslims. This, coupled with a 20-year lack of response by these agencies, should naturally lead to deeper questioning by the world community. Simply put, the time for cheap talk and platitudes is over. The world is waking up and asking, is the Nigerian government complicit in these attacks? Time will tell, but for this long-time watcher, the decision is in. Nigeria is almost evenly divided between Christians and Muslims, with a Muslim majority in the north and a Christian majority in the south. But for the Christians who are somewhere in the middle, it's been a decades-long genocide. Jihadis want to expand, and contrary to the claims of Western journalists and Dawagandists, 
Islam expands through terrorism, mass murder, beheadings, stoning, oppression, rape, kidnapping, forced marriage, torture, burning churches, and burning Christians. It's what future generations will look back at and wonder in horror. How did the entire world ignore the genocide of Nigerian Christians? And when future generations ask that question, my great-great-grandson will reply, they ignored it because they were a bunch of sniveling cowards with columns of marshmallows where their spines should have been.